Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to try to resolve the tutorial number four that we proposed some long time ago. Um, I didn't see if anybody that has tried to solve the problem, it actually did it in the same way that I did, or if they have kind of problems, they could maybe find, or I could help them to find the solution. Okay, um, I don't remember, well, I don't know if you remember, sorry, <clears throat> but this problem was kind of like a converging station between two conveyors, okay, let's say that these two parts, they are coming from two different injection moldings, for example, uh, and this, each of the molds is going to produce two, one part, almost at the same time, not always, of course, they're not synchronized, and they're going to be coming, and at one point we want to connect them because it's the same, pretty much the same part, the two molds are a copy, and we want to join them uh, and continue using only one conveyor, okay, because they're going to do another part of the manufacturing process, and and there is a machine that is needed for connecting the two lines in one okay we need a node which is going to be this one where pretty much both are going to be connected and then continue in one conveyor after that okay so i think i show you a little bit of how it was working uh, we have it's a little bit more complex than the previous ones we have done. I personally don't think it was too much. In fact, it was easier than some that I did before. Uh, maybe not same I saw you, but at least some of that I did before. I consider this one being a little bit easier. And it has some sensors. The inputs are going to be here. Okay. Some we won't need. Oh, sorry, these are the outputs. These are the inputs. We're going to use input 1, 2, and then we have 3, 4, and 5. And then we have here the switches or the, the buttons. Input 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay? These ones, they are uh, photosensors. In fact, they were, let me see, this one. Diffuse sensors. Okay? And uh, that one it is going to be a capacitive sensor. Pretty much, at least for this program, they are going to work similarly. Um, this one has, capacitive sensor has much less range, okay? We could modify a little bit, but not too much. Um, the diffuse sensor has a little bit more range, okay? But both, they're going to work as normally open. Okay, so they will not transfer the electricity to the PLC until they detect something, okay, in the middle. All of them are going to be the same. I would suggest, even if you want to play with, use different sensors, you can use different sensors, but just to make it easy, make them all to be in the same page, okay? If you want to make normally closed sensors, put everything as normally closed. If you want to use normally open, just use everything normally open, okay? Just because if not, you may have a little bit of a chaos there, and that it may give you extra problems, you know, extra troubles. Sometimes they are obvious, but it's not that easy to see when you have like more than five lines, you know, you start seeing like a little bit, I mean, I don't say it's too complex, of course, but I mean, you're going to have one here, other line, other line, other line, I mean, so they're pretty simple. As I said, it's not the most expensive, um, difficult problem, but at least you have some lines, and trust me, it's going to help if you can make everything as simple as possible. So, these sensors are the most important one of the most important parts of the whole assembly system because they are going to determine if there is a box one of these like um, containers that is going to be 
in this area or in this area or it's going to be before or after okay the separation between a capacity sensor and the diffuse sensors both here and here it should be less than the length of the container so if for example a container is going to be between input 1 and input 5 it is going to be detected either by this one that one or that one sensor okay and the same thing for here okay that is really important because i don't want a blind spot where the container it may be hidden for the sensors and then the plc is going to tell the system to do something but then suddenly realize that it was too late because there is a the part in this one and you don't want it to be there okay so we're going to use typical containers like that um try to like simulate in a regular container that plastic container that was just like uh produce see we're gonna put here a random uh parts between i mean in times okay to be produced between two seconds or 12 seconds that one is gonna be the same thing but it's gonna be quite random you have a here big range that oops is to show that these boxes they can appear at any moment random moments okay you don't want to be always at the same time because then it's going to do the same thing you want to simulate the reality and it's like one for some reason one of the injection moldings was started before and it's going to produce parts uh, before than the other one and then it's going to have like a, a delay in time or maybe for some reason the other one you have one you have to shut down for like a few seconds because you have cool problems cooling problem uh in the in the in the machine and then one goes slower than the other one try to simulate a little bit more real random okay and then you're gonna test if this converging converging station sorry is gonna work fine or not in the outputs you have the typical conveyors roller conveyors they're gonna have three outputs one two and six you're gonna have the typical lights and then the counter which is going to be three four five and the counter and then you're going to have this system okay which is also in i think it's that one chain transfer um that one it is going to is able to move front to back in reverse left to right looking from this orientation and right to left okay some of them i will need like reverse i don't need that's why i left it as it was and load two i don't need right to left from this orientation i won't need because i don't want to like throw the container there will be other machines to test that uh because i don't have any sensor to decide if this container is good or not and the same thing this one this one right to left also won't be needed so which one i do need output 9 which is going to be moving to the front and then output 11 which is going to move this container to the other line okay and in this case i need output 10 which is going to continue moving the container that it was being transferred from this line to the first one and also of course output 8 which is going to move everything in the front okay output 7 won't be used okay so we only need output 8 10 11 and 9 okay the rest won't be needed okay another problem maybe this transfer system can help you to move front to right i mean front to back uh right left everything but in this problem is quite simple we only want to go everything move ahead you know <coughs> sorry <coughs> okay so we're gonna start with the typical thing network one which is always for connecting the siemens tia portal to the factory io software we have the star stop machine network is the same one as before okay i won't stop to talk too much about that we have the start stop and emergency stop uh switches and I want that if everything is if it's a start, a start is pressed then the machine is going to work and we're going to use parameter one for that if for some reason you have to stop both 
in regular stop or emergency is going to stop shut down the whole um, conveyor system okay security then we're going to start with the first conveyor which is going to be output one output one is going to be working always if the machine is on parameter one and if parameter three is not on okay and we will see what is parameter three exactly so pretty much the main thing is that i want to give line one priority uh, the main reason is not because maybe the injection molding one the machine injection mold is not faster or better it's just because this line it is a straight and it gives me a reference okay so what i want to do is that if the container is going to be running and like it's going to be we're going to have priority in the first line okay the first line is going to run the container it's going to continue like nothing happened then you're going to have boxes for your containers coming from the second line if the there is a box here ready to be transferred but there is another box here in this area that we're going to call transfer area transfer area one sorry one is that one and transfer area two if there is a, a container in the transfer area two but at the same time there is a, con a container in the transfer area one because the one has priority of course makes sense it's going to move first that one of course you don't want to move that one to here to the first one if you already have something there then they're going to get stuck so first you want to like just clean the first because it's the straight one and then you want to move the other one okay so that is the philosophy the philosophy sorry we're going to use so we are only going to transfer from two to one if there is nothing node object in the transfer area one but there is an object in the transfer area two okay if there is any kind of object in the transfer area one even if we have something in this other area, it's going to keep moving, okay? And then after, when it's going to be clean, then it's going to move this second one to the first one, okay? So that is the philosophy, as he said, we're going to use. <clears throat> so pretty much, uh, that one is going to be moving, okay? Uh, we have parameter three, sorry, it's going to be a little chaotic here, which is going to be the transfer thing, okay? So pretty much he's saying, if there is something... And what we're going to start, sorry, with the output 8, just to see that better. 8 is going to be that one. So let's say output 1 is moving, moves the container here. And as soon as this one is on, it's going to keep moving, okay? Uh, which is going to be the output 8, that one, okay? That one is going to be moving. Well, we're going to start starting with output one. Sorry, sorry, my fault. Output one. Here. Both, as you can see, they are the same. Output one is going to be that one. Output eight is going to be that one. The one for the transfer system. And they're going to be moving if the machine is connected and parameter three is not connected okay parameter three it is that one pretty much is saying that if input three is that one here input three if there is any object here okay detects anything then parameter three is gonna be off and if parameter three is gonna be off both output one and output eight is gonna move Okay, so pretty much if it's off, okay. So if there is something moving here, if there is any object here, then it's gonna move this transfer, this conveyor eight, but also the output one. It's gonna move all this line together, okay. Pretty much it's gonna say, like, imagine there is only they we shut down the line two and it's going to be moving the line one so the conveyor is going to be moving okay 
um, it's gonna be moving, and if it detects anything, okay, if there is nothing happening here, the conveyor is gonna keep moving. <laughs> 